Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Time Stories Madam. The final chapter in the first season of Time Stories, the white cycle ends here. And later in the year, we'll start to see the second season as the story in the, of time continues. But how does Madam fare? Well, first of all, let's just talk about gameplay, again, without spoilers. And like all of these things, folks, uh, if you want to see a little bit of the game, and you want to know a bit about the mechanism, because I'm going to try to spoil nothing here, you can go hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen, and uh, I will... Basically, just do an unboxing. That's what I do. I show you the first five minutes of stuff. I give you ample warning um, before I would do anything that would even be remotely considered spoilers. So if you want to get a sense for what the new gameplay is here, don't be afraid. I'm not going to spoil anything about the story. And I also do give you a huge warning because there is unfortunately a massive typo, as always, uh, with time stories. And I mentioned it literally in the first minute of the main run-through. So go check that out so that you don't get stuck. Uh, but anyway... Bing! Um, or go check out the Time Stories FAQ, which is maintained by Paul Grogan of um, Gaming Rules, one of the best channels on YouTube. Subscribe to Paul! Thank you, Paul, for keeping the FAQ up, and uh, the, it also explains what the typo is here. Again, only in the English version, as always. But anyway, as an aside, putting those little um, you know missteps aside, how does this rate? I gotta say, folks, for me and Jen, the, um, Time Story Season 1, The White Cycle Ended with a Bang. This is our favorite. We love this one the most for two big, big reasons. Um, one, this uh, madam has a the smallest dependence on dice of any of them. The amount of time... You do still roll dice. You still have to engage in scuffles every once in a while or do some, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, try and convince people to do things they don't necessarily want to do by using your wits or whatever. And that requires rolling and hopefully not getting failures and getting successes and burning time. That's still there, but it is so minor. Um, so There's so little of it, I don't even mind that it's there. When we do it, it's kind of occasionally, oh, that's kind of nice. It's a nice little breath of fresh air. As opposed to the way it's been in some, where it's like, oh my god, kill me now if I have to roll these dice one more time. Uh, it, it, you know, the, Madam finds a much better um, balance for dice usage than any of the other time stories. And I hope it's a harbinger for the development of the game going into Season 2, uh, when we get into the blue cycle. That um, you know, I, I still hope that in Season 2, the dice fundamentally do not exist at all um, because of the other thing that makes me love Madam. Uh, and again, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I don't want to spoil anything. If you want to discover yourself, I'll just tell you the name. It's um, called Temporal Imprints. Uh, this new Temporal Imprint system is so awesome. And I think people are going to absolutely adore it because it addresses probably the number one most commonly levied complaint against Time Stories. The you know the fundamental nature of Time Stories is it's, it's Groundhog Day, the board game. You go in, you try and do some stuff, you run out of time, everything resets, and now you know what to do and what not to do, but you have to do some things more than once. So you might have to do some things, you know, a half a dozen times over the course of the game. The temporal imprint system, if you hate the Groundhog Day nature of this game, you're going to love, you're going to be so, Madam, why didn't, why wasn't the temporal imprint in the very, very first game ever? Because it's so awesome! Um, but again, I'm not, if you want to know what it is, without, again, any story spoilers. You can go watch the run-through. It's near the end. I explain how it actually works, and I warn you all that stuff. But anyway, the temporal imprints are awesome. Um, it's one of the reasons we have a lot less dependency on dice, uh, which is very, very cool, too. Another thing that I should say that I absolutely adore about Madame, uh, you know, it is set in, what, 17th century France in the, uh, the court of Louis XIV in the Palace of Versailles, and History comes alive here in a way that uh, beats every other time stories to date. Uh, you know, I, in large part because every time you come to a location, and I don't recall them doing this very much. Every time you come to a location, you know, the the first page it tells you, "Hey, here's what you see. Here's who the people are." You know, so you know what this card and this card and this card means. Almost every one of these location cards also spends time telling you about the historic reality of that location. Here is that location. It was a real place in the uh, Palace of Versailles. Here's what it meant. Here's who these real people were. Here's what the overall importance of it was in society. 
Maybe it's because this game is actually set in Renaissance-era France, and of course the developers of Time Stories are French. So maybe it's just that they knew more about the history here, but I, there feels like there is a much more loving attention to detail. Uh, this feels closer to a history lesson, closer to a, oh, I get to travel with Mr. Peabody back in time and learn all about history. Madam makes history come alive in a way I mean, they've always done to a certain extent, but never as much as this. And I love it. I absolutely adore it. I wish I knew as much about ancient Egypt, you know, from Under the Mask, as I do now about Renaissance-era France from Madame, you know, as an example. I love it. And again, it's my hope that, you know, that attention to detail uh, bodes well for moving forward into the second season of Time Stories, The Blue Cycle. I'll talk a bit more about that at the end, what is known, because mostly it's just rumor and conjecture at this point. So anyway... Those three things, I guess, are what really put this over the top for us. Less dice, um, <clears throat> the temporal imprints, and more history than ever before. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of nice little twists. Um, I think some people will be disappointed. In fact, I don't even think. I know. There are a lot of people who've already played this complaining vociferously, loudly, and angrily on Board Game Geek about how disappointed they are with Madam. And I, I want to I set your expectations correctly so that if you are a Time Stories fan and you pick up the season finale... Remember, not series finale, season finale, that you go in with the right set of expectations. Because I think a lot of people are upset that, hey, if this is a season finale, how come... Um, all the big epic meta story stuff hasn't been wrapped up in a tiny little bow. Is this lost the board game? I'm angry. I'm very dissatisfied that all my questions weren't answered. And, you know, my response to that is, folks, you know what? At the end of the first season of The Fugitive, they didn't catch the one-armed man. At the end of the first season of X-Files, Fox didn't find his sister. This is the first season. The whole story isn't supposed to be wrapped up. I don't want to tell you anything about how this ends, but I do want to warn you, if you're going in here thinking, all of my questions will be answered, well, we haven't had. We've, this is only the end of the first season. Um, you know, we, you, we go into season two with more questions than answers. I, I, I just have to warn you of that right now so that you don't feel anger that you play all the way through this. Because another thing I should say about Madam, I think it's undoubtedly the longest module we've ever played. Uh, this one took me and Jen must be at least 30-40% longer than any other one. Even though it has the same number of cards and whatnot, and there's a number of reasons for that. But, you know, Jen and I, we were engaged all the way through. We absolutely loved it. And when we got to the end, and we're like, oh, that's the ending? Ooh, what's that? Ooh, what's this mean for the future? We're excited. And again, I, all I can say is if you go in with the right expectations, hopefully you will be as excited as us. And you won't be furious that they didn't explain what's the hatch! You know, a, a lost reference. They're not supposed to explain what the hatch is. You're supposed to be left wondering so that you'll go into the second season. That's the way these serialized storytelling systems work. So... Um, just understand that. Again, I don't want to tell you anything about what happens at the end, other than all the questions will not be answered. Don't expect that to be the case. You wouldn't expect that from a TV show at the end of its first season. You shouldn't expect it from Time Stories at the end of its first season. The White Cycle. Alrighty, let's see. What else should I say? Well, I, I mentioned... Oh, oh, one thing. You If you... If you like us, had come in here having played the previous one, Brotherhood of the Coast, and you watched my little introduction, you might be saying, hey, that introduction makes no sense because of what happened to me in Brotherhood of the Coast. You remember in my uh, Brotherhood of the Coast video, I, I was so excited about how it basically ended with a cliffhanger if you made certain choices. If you didn't, if you did other things, everything just kind of ended, you know, kind of nice and normal like a regular adventure, but it could have ended with a cliffhanger. Uh, the way that works is, and I only say this because... You know, it might have been six months. It might have been a long time since you've played. And if you've forgotten, for f if you remember that you ended Brotherhood of the Coast with a particular cliffhanger, do not forget the Brotherhood of the Coast, or more to the point, I think it was the website, um, you know, the, the Time Stories Agency website told you, if you ended with that cliffhanger, before you start playing Madam, check out item number 12. This is very important. It will if if you have that cliffhanger, it will not make sense if you do not read item 12 first. So that's just a reminder in case you forgot, because it's been a while since we played Brotherhood of the Coast. Alright, so that's a little thing too. Ah. Hmm. Stuff to complain about. 
I don't... I mean, I, it's very, very important, I think, that you understand, like every Time Stories module before this, and I talked about this a lot in the in the previous one as well, um, it can't... I mean, uh, some people will complain that it is too repetitive. And as I explained last time, do not forget that when you are doing another uh, jump, another mission, another run, whatever you want to call it, you're supposed to fast forward through stuff. You are not supposed to go systematically to every single location, lay everything out, very systematically move and all that. You're just supposed to say, right, all we needed from here was the crowbar. Um, right, it was this card, right? Yes, it was this. Okay, boom, we took one time, and now let's roll a Captain Die and move on to the next place. If you remember that revisiting these areas, what Jen and I have actually done, here's another pro tip for Time Story players that Jen and I have learned. After we finish a given zone, we don't put the cards back on the location deck. We actually put it over here in its own little stack. And then when we finish the next zone, we put it in a completely separate stack. By the time we visit all these locations, we've, I mean, we've taken up half the table with all those areas. Because when we make a later jump, what we do is say, right, okay, we gotta go back to the swimming pool. Okay, that's where that was. All right, okay, we're going to the swimming pool. And which card was it? It was... It was this card, right? Okay, we're all just going to go to this card. Boom, we're going to do the thing. It That could have us two time, or roll the dice. It took us this much time. We're done. Okay, put that away. Now, move over here, roll. And you can repeat your previous things that took you, you know, upwards of a half an hour in less than 30 seconds if you play fast forward style. And so, like I strongly said, play this game with a huge table because by the end, all the locations will be in easy to grab um, piles so you can just jump back wherever you need to go. Just go to the cards you need to go. Don't go to everywhere. Just get the things you need to go. Spend the time you need to spend and move forward. Now more than ever um, in Madam, you need to play that way or else you will find it feels like it gets a little bogged down. Jen and I have never felt that way because I believe we have always played it within the spirit, the Groundhog Day, um, you know, a, a montage approach where when you go back and do the same stuff, do it as a montage, just skip to the good stuff. Don't, um, you know, just get lost in the weeds of, of exploring the same stuff you've already seen and you won't get frustrated by that. That's a very important thing to know. I have one complaint. Um, and it does have to do with, I'm not going to say it. Um, it's not a spoiler. I'm not going to spoil anything about the story. I, 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 I think I've done enough by saying that all the questions won't be answered. That's my only story spoiler. This is a season finale, not a series finale. Um, we've walked out of here with more questions than answers, as a season finale should be. That's my one spoiler story. But I do want to... I have one complaint, and it is about the ending. And um, But it's a spoiler. And it is a big... No, it's not a story spoiler. It's a mechanism spoiler. And I'm gonna warn you. I, I'm done talking here, folks. If uh, you, you hopefully you have a good enough idea between um, you know just this kind of general purpose stuff and hitting the eye to go uh, see what the first few cards look like and understand what temporal imprints are. You should know whether this is worth um, playing to finish out the first season. We thought it was in a big, 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 big way, huge way. Absolutely, we were over the moon, very excited about what's coming, um, the second season. Which, by the way, supposedly, when we go into the second season, the blue season, we will no longer need this. Supposedly, this is a thing of the past. And when we get the additional ones, they're going to come in blue boxes, and they're completely 100% standalone. That's very interesting in and of itself. I, and that has not been 100% confirmed, but that seems to be the prevailing wisdom, that that's how the second season is going to work. It's going to feel very different. I wouldn't be surprised if it feels more escape roomy. You know, escape room in a box. Because, hey, the whole thing is just, they're all a little standalone. And apparently you can play them out of order. That's another rumor that people have said. You don't have to play them in linear order to get the entire meta story. That's very interesting, too. I can see why that would be the case based on how the season finale of Madam ended. I could see why, oh, things might be a little non-linear in the future. Again, I'm not going to say why. But I am going to stop right now and say thanks, everyone, for watching. Everybody have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye. And if you're still here, Again, I'm not going to spoil the story, but I will express my one complaint. When you get to the end, when we have solved the problem of Madam and um, you know, done everything we need to do, and we're in our final encounter, at the end of the story, we are given a final puzzle. And based on what you have done over the course of the entire nine-chapter storyline of Time Stories you may not be able to solve the final puzzle. You might get to this space and say, oh, oh, throughout the whole thing, that thing we've been doing in every single game, 
That's what it's all for. It's for this moment right here. And, oh, I didn't do that thing in this game. Or, I sold my old copy of uh, Expedition Endurance or Prophecy of Dragons or whatever. I can't actually solve this puzzle. It is physically impossible for me to do it. Now, that's fine. Because I, 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 I don't begrudge the developers saying, hey, you know what? When you buy these things, you should hold on to them. There are important things. It'll come into play at the end of this. They never told us that, but they did tell us, hey, every time you do a thing in all the other previous chapters, it's going to be important because you're going to take an item and pull it out of here and hold on to it for a future date. Madam is that future date. And now, if you don't have all the pieces, you're going to get to this puzzle at the end, and you're going to say, you're either going to say, oh, it's a puzzle. I've got all the pieces. Let me open up all my other old copies, and I can do it all, and we can do the final puzzle and get the ending. Um, or, this is my complaint. If you don't have those pieces because you didn't hold on to all the old things, you will get here and, and you'll be stuck. You literally can't do anything. You're just trapped, and there's no sense of completion or closure, and that is so dumb! Again, I'm not saying I I I think it's cool that yeah you had to have all the pieces from all the other puzzles and it all comes together that for the final puzzle that's cool, but what should have happened is if you're in a situation where I don't have all those pieces I can't do it there should have been a thing saying oh well if you can't do it here read this card and give us a satisfactory conclusion that explains our situation because right now it's literally it's it's like it's a bug. You're trapped. It's like you're playing a video game, and uh, you're in a room, and there's no keys, and there's no way to get out, and you're trapped forever, and all you can do is just turn off your machine and walk away and say, well, that was the worst ending in gaming history ever. That can happen to you and Madam. And it probably will. I suspect the vast majority of people who've made it all the way to the end have not kept all of their previous modules, and therefore will not have the tools necessary to solve the final puzzle in the final room. So, um, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to do like what I did, and you're going to go to Board Game Geek, where there's a thread in the Time Stories Madam forum where they're saying, Oh, do you not have the thing? Here, here it is. Here's what you have to do. And they're going to give you the thing you need to do to be able to actually get the ending. Um, and the ending is basically saying, Hey, boop, boop, that's the ending. Here's the cliffhanger. And um, wait, wait till you see what happens in season two. It's it literally we end with a cliffhanger. But if you don't have all the pieces, you don't get the cliffhanger. It's like what? Come on, Time Stories developers, what is wrong with you? You had to know that a sizable portion of your audience was not going to be able to complete this puzzle, and that meant you just had to have a button over there that players could push, saying, "I can't complete the puzzle. Please give me an ending. Give me a bad ending. Give me any ending. Don't just trap me forever." Dilly! Oh my god, I can't believe that. Um, in contrast to everything I was saying earlier about how I'm actually um, optimistic about the future of time stories. I am hoping dice are completely a thing of the past. If anything, the thing that makes me hope that is uh, why I was so excited when I finally did see the cliffhanger ending. The way that's set up, it makes me think, it makes me assume that maybe there will be no dice in the future. Which I certainly understand. If everything is a standalone, they don't want to have to keep publishing those dice over and over and over again. That'll raise the price, right? They just want to give you a bunch of cards and, and cardboard chits. No dice! Oh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. And like I said, the cliffhanger ending they give you, if you can complete the final puzzle, hints that maybe that's the case. But it doesn't commit to anything. Which I, I think is cool. I love a mystery. I love Lost. Um, you know, I loved X-Files back in the day. But... It was so dumb of them not to have a button for, I can't complete this puzzle, please tell me something. Please tell me that I'm trapped forever in limbo and, you know, give, give us a, 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 a um, spoiler alert for the end of Quantum Leap. Give us an ending uh, 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 um, for like what, um, the, the, you know, actually it's not, I won't say what the ending of Quantum Leap is. It's the greatest ending of TV history as far as I'm concerned. Give us an ending like that. If you, if you, something, developers of Time Stories. But they don't. And it's okay, you'll get around it, but it means you literally have to go to Board Game Geek, you have to find the thread, and then you have to get the information that they have. Because some people out there did keep all the copies, were able to go back, get all the pieces, put them together, and solve the final puzzle. So, it didn't bother me, but it was kind of a bummer. I would have liked to see the, oh, I can't do it, so tell me, what is my fate? And they don't tell you what your fate is. Because you literally have to live out your fate. Your fate is to be trapped in this final puzzle and never be able to do anything ever again for the rest of history. Or, your final puzzle is, you're trapped in this room. Go back out and rebuy every module to get the piece you need out of everyone, and then come back. And that's ridiculous. Nobody's going to do that. The developers know that. I'm sorry, I'm just I'm repeating myself now. 
I'm still happy because I didn't mind just having to go onto BoardGameGeek and look up the answer. That's fine. Hey, you know what? When Lost was over, I had to go to the internet and find that people did the detective work and figured out how all the answers were given. And, um, you know, there was a full and compelling and satisfying ending. Not just an emotional ending, but a logically consistent ending as well. I know people don't believe it. If you want to, I'll send you the links. Um, and so, yeah. I'm sorry. I, 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 that's it. That's it, folks. That is final thoughts from Adam. What a weird... Weird, wild ride it has been. And I've, for the most part, enjoyed every step of the way. And that's it, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Oh, bye bye.